Maverick are a television and multi-platform production company who are often commissioned by Channel 4 to bring you programmes such as Embarrassing Bodies and Ten Years Younger. On the 10th of January, we took a trip to their headquarters in Birmingham to find out more about how the company is run. Let's be completely crude about this as well. Your genitalia have disappeared in amongst all of this, haven't they? Yes. So, I haven't um, seen the light of day in a long time. I think there is no doubt that we need to send you off to a surgeon. Okay. And you essentially need to have all of this mass of flesh removed. Absolutely. Hi, my name is Johnny Turpia. I'm the director of digital media at Maverick Television. And uh, my role is to oversee the development of uh, innovation within the multi-platform and digital media section of the business. And that means that actually the, all the other things that we do around television, I look after. I'm Helen Jenks and I'm the production executive for digital media and multi-platform at Maverick. Um, so I am responsible for the department in terms of budgets, contracts, schedules, staffing, all the kind of admin around the creative elements of the business. My name is Nick Lockie. I'm a um, development producer working predominantly in new media but also across some TV stuff as well. So um, my job is to um, come up with the initial ideas for uh, any um, web stuff and non-TV stuff that goes with Maverick shows and also some shows produced by other production companies and some commercial projects as well. And I do do a little bit of TV development and that's what my, my background was originally in. Uh, I've been in development for about 10 years but about five years ago I moved across into multi-platform and that can cover websites, games, apps, um, kind of real world stuff that kind of um, feeds into digital and TV stuff as well and crossover hybrid projects that involve TV as well as uh, other platforms too. I'm Toby Nutter, I'm a technical assistant at Maverick TV. Um, my role is I, I set up kit um, for the crews to go out and shoot with. Um, I maintain that kit to a certain extent. Um, I then also sort of help prep the edit um, I make sure footage that comes back goes into the edit, ready for them to, to edit with. Um, and sort of, you know, I, I assist the facilities department in all their sort of technical roles um, and the post-production department. I'm Donna Mulvey-Jones. I'm head of post-production at Maverick Television and I look after our internal post facilities as well. I work across both our sites, our head office here in Birmingham and also our London facility. And I work with all production teams uh, design the workflows of production right the way through from before we start filming to delivery of our programmes to the broadcasters and I look after the internal post-production and cameras that we have in-house and also the outsourcing um, of post-production services when we go out of house. I'm Melanie, I'm a researcher. Um, so the responsibilities of a researcher are quite varied really. Um, it can be casting, so finding people to come on the show, um, and once you've found them, looking after them. Um, setting up shoots, um, making sure everything goes okay on the shoots, finding locations. Um, so there's lots of different things really that, that go into research and it's quite a, a wide spectrum. Do you want to feel it? It's just hair to me, isn't it? I know they love the person underneath her hair. Mm. Hair's just hair. My journey to work at Maverick TV started three years before I started here, but in my first year at uni. Um, I went to a talk hosted by the uh, Royal Television Society in Birmingham, um, uh, at which um, someone from Maverick, the, uh, Donna Mulvey-Jones, who's the head of all things facilities and post-production. Um, she was talking there and one of the things she was talking about was sort of the ways to get work experience. Um, and at the end of it, I went up to her and said, right, in the future I want to be an editor. I know that obviously I can't go and do that as placement, um, but I'd like a placement at Maverick. Who do I go to and what do I say? She said, you come to me and you say that. So I sent her an email saying, hi, we met. Um, and she gave me a two-week placement in my first year. Um, and from then on, they kind of, they, they call me up and they say, can you come in for like a week or maybe a couple of evenings, maybe a weekend to get some stuff done when they were really busy. Um, and they started paying me to do that. 
Um, I did another placement for them once when I had nothing to do for a couple of weeks. I just phoned them up and went, um, I'm going to be bored for two weeks in January. Can I come in? They, they said yes. Um, in my third year, I had to turn down some work for them because I was too busy doing uni work. But eventually, uh, having finished uni, within about a week or two, I got a phone call from um, the uh, from the coordinator, facilities coordinator, who said, you know, we're currently looking for someone. Are you employed? Would you like to come in for an interview? So I came in and they gave me the job. So I started my job here just over a month after finishing university, which um, was really quite lucky. But um, at the same time, I think, you know, the, the effort was put in at the beginning. Um, that's, that, that's how I got this job because I came to them whilst at uni, did work, worked for them, impressed them, I hope, and um, yeah, so they gave me the job. I did a media degree at Liverpool, um, and then I was looking for work, um, and I got a call from Maverick, actually, um, asking me to do some work on reception, um, because while I was at uni, I, I worked on receptions in the summer. Um, so that skill and having my degree kind of got my, my foot in the door, really. Um, so I worked on reception for a year, and then worked my way up, and um, been here for four years and then went to a few other companies. I've just come back again for um, embarrassing bodies. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> See? <laughs> right, do we need more bubbles? We need more bubbles. So. Can we do that again? There. You have absolutely come alive. If you never wear clothes again, it'll be fine. <laughs> We deal with a lot of clients who aren't broadcasters, obviously. We do a lot of work for the NHS. Um, we do quite a bit of work with public sector arts organisations. Um, and then we also do the multi-platform side for a lot of the broadcasters, particularly Channel 4. Maverick's an independent television production company, which means we work with a variety of different clients and channels. Um, we also do some commercial stuff as well, so we have a big digital project with the NHS, uh, which isn't attached to any TV stuff. And also, um, we're owned by a parent company as well, called All Three Media. And there's other, um, there's other production companies within All Three Media who don't have any digital capacity, so sometimes we help them out as well. So um, we tend to work a lot for Channel 4. We've got a really good reputation at Channel 4. And, um, for the sort of shows that we do, factual shows that are predominantly medical or beauty and well-being shows. Um, and we also do a lot of digital content for Channel 4 that isn't related to Maverick shows. So we do um, the Four Homes website, Four Beauty website uh, and Film 4 website, which covers you know, probably like just the, the Four Homes website probably covers about 20 different shows, uh, all within the kind of home building and home improvement um, sector within Channel 4. Um, we don't necessarily produce all of those, but we do the online content, so kind of like the magazine content for it as well. Um, in terms of stuff that I've worked on, it could be really diverse. You know, one week I, I can be developing games for a kid's website, the next week I can be liaising with scientists and academics on a health show. Um, I could be coming up with uh, an iPhone app for an arts program. You know, it's, it could be anything really. It's it largely dictated to what the shows you know we're producing at the time, or or the commissioners we're talking to about what they want. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit more freeform, and we come up with ideas ourselves. Um, but my job as a digital developer is to kind of keep my finger on the pulse of all the different things that are happening in the digital world. Um, all the latest social networks, latest games, latest apps, uh, latest TV shows that have uh, different aspects um, to them that involve digital or games. So I'm kind of a jack of all trades really. And it's my job to kind of liaise with the people who then make that happen. And I do a bit of project management, but mainly I'm there at the kind of the very start of the process. It's my job to get it up to the point where it's commissioned and then we hand it over to the production teams. I worked on, um, started on 10 years younger as a location assistant, which is another term for a runner really, um, which was fantastic, very hard work, but brilliant. Um, so I got to see surgery, um, I had to look after all the women when they were going through the huge changes to their bodies and um, 
it was a great show to start off on. Um, and then I moved to um, How to Look Good Naked with Gark, which was great again, and I was a location assistant on that. And then halfway through, um, I got promotion to a researcher. Um, and then I went for something completely different and worked on an animal show for Maverick, um, finding pets with embarrassing um, habits, <laughs> which was fun. Um, and then on to Embarrassing Bodies. I did a bit of casting on there. And then my final project um, before I came back for this one was um, Gox Naked Truth, which was working with teenagers um, and about their bodies and how they feel about them, really. So quite a few productions. It's been great. <laughs> We do have some in-house facilities. We have a selection of cameras, which we go out shooting on our productions for. And we have edit suites, um, and a, an audio suite, and an online suite in Birmingham as well. Um, and in London, we have mainly offline facilities. We have some Final Cut Pro suites, and we also have Avid, which are the two main editing platforms. Hey, I'm Electra, and I'm going to show you how to get the look. Cool t-shirt. It's mega easy. Well, I've been at Maverick 10 years, and I think Maverick was about five years old, maybe a bit younger when I started. Um, I'd originally started my career in London and came up here and knew Maverick as the big independent production company in the Midlands and always wanted to get a job here. Um, they were one of the first companies to start using small digital cameras before other companies, which allowed um, other members of the team to kind of film instead of getting a crew in so it made it more cost effective and that was when Maverick really started being different to other companies. We began the company in 1993 in Digbeth in Eastside not far from the academy and that uh, we started it because two of us wanted to uh, make our own films and TV programmes um, from Birmingham rather than having to travel to other companies in other parts of the country and make the programmes from there. And that we also wanted to um, apply all sorts of new technologies that were starting to become freely awa available in the video space so that um, that allowed us to use small cameras and small production teams to make mainstream television. Maverick I think are always looking for ways in the way the industry is changing. We're one of the first companies to do um, a lot of multi-platform programming, particularly Embarrassing Bodies, where we run a really popular BAFTA winning site alongside doing the broadcast. So we understand the importance of social media and how people's viewing habits are changing basically, instead of all sitting in front of a TV. Um, Maverick fits into the creative media sector in a whole range of ways. Um, we fit into the ecosystem that's the media sector in Birmingham and the West Midlands. and work with a whole range of companies, both media and TV companies, but also digital agencies, arts bodies, public sector bodies, health bodies. Um, so in the local area, but also in the, the national uh, picture, we fit in with um, a whole range of independent production companies that produce media for um, all the main terrestrial broadcasters, ITV, BBC, Channel 4, 5, Sky, MTV, Disney, and all the satellite broadcasters. Um, and I think one of the ways that we are defined from uh, maybe some other companies is that uh, we're very people focused and a lot of our programming comes from wanting to make some sort of a difference and um, the other defining factor is our multi-platform digital media approach which means that we make television and digital at the same time and we present that as part of our uh, offer. A uh, very good example of that could be Embarrassing Bodies for Channel 4, which is a fantastically popular television show that uh, many people watch to uh, find out what Embarrassing Bodies are. 
And, um, but what we also do is run a really successful online platform, which is Embarrassing Bodies Online, where people can talk to each other, where people can download self-checker um, applications and services, they can download um, diagnoses and doctor's diagnosis, and then they can uh, be forwarded on to other services that they may want. And uh, we've extended that into a live program called Life from the Clinic, which is basically instead of the doctors going out in trucks to the rest of the country and meeting patients or people with conditions there, actually we Skype them into the studio and into the clinic. And uh, those sort of uh, multi-platform approaches to media, I think, is our, our, one of our main uh, defining factors in the creative media space. A New Year blessing. Jesus loves you, Kevin. Lovely, thanks. Everyone else thinks you're a Yeah, get loads of work placement. And I know there's a big thing at the moment about unpaid uh, internships and so on, but if it's only a couple of weeks, you're not gonna get paid. They might give you expenses. I think on my first one, they, they, they gave me 15 quid to cover my bus journeys in or something. Um, but, you know, just do as many work placements as possible. Get your name out there, impress them. Remember, work placement isn't just what can they do for you, but what can you do for them. So, you know, I was going into it as if I'm going to help you, I'm going to work for you, I'm going to provide a service for you, and you're going to give me experience for that. Um, but yeah, plenty of work placement, um, get yourself known. Keep, keep asking, if people say, oh, sorry, we can't, we can't do anything at the moment, ask them again six months later. Say, you know, if there's anything free, um, you know, g g these are my details. Um, um, that that is the way forward. I think is getting experience in the industry, whilst you're maybe at university or college or what have you. Um, uh, that, that's that's how I got my job. I'm not sure if I do have advice for people coming um, or wanting to come into the media sector um, because I think it's a, a it's a fantastically mobile sector. Things are changing every week, particularly within the digital space. Uh, you know, when we started at Maverick, uh, we didn't have a mobile phone, we didn't have digital cameras, uh, that whole, uh, we didn't have applications, we didn't have the internet, for God's sake. Uh, so actually things have changed in the period of Maverick and, have, and they will change within the period of BOA's growth. And uh, so I think it's to be aware of all these opportunities and find the clever, intelligent, interesting, creative, engaging ways to use media in all its forms. Thank you.